What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another AEW Unrivaled Collection series review, but this time it is not on series one. It is not on series three. It's a little weird. Today, we're doing it on series number two. John Moxley, MJF, two of my favorite talents in all of AEW, probably. I'm excited for these. These are two of the figures that we first saw almost a year ago. It was actually on the day of my son's birth that these figures were revealed to us. February 22nd. That day that they were revealed at that toy con. I thought it was Toy Fair. It was a New York Toy Fair or something like that. AEW unveiled these. It was the day of my son's birth. It was very epic sauce. One of the greatest days of my entire life. And then on the figure side of things, it was the greatest day of my life because we got to see these beautiful specimens in the, in the reality on the shelf. And here they are today. And I can't wait to crack them open, guys. So here's your front viewing window. Looking pretty damn good. On the right, you have their names in solid gold. AEW logos. Their series number right there. On the back, you have John Moxley. And you have MJF right there. You got the rest of the figures in the wave, which we will review for you guys. And then we got the AEW logo over here. Pictures of the talent right here on the front of the packaging. And that pretty much does it for MJF and John Moxley's packaging. Guys, if you'd like to grab these, I highly, highly doubt they're in stock anywhere. But if you want to pre-order them, I'm pretty sure the pre-order is up at Ringside Collectibles. So use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when going over there and shopping. They got some epic deals that you can get WWE, AEW. Let's shut the hell up. Use the promo code when you go over there, though. I, I want to plug that in there because you guys always kick ass with the support. But there is MJF and John Moxley, guys. So let's crack them out of their packaging like Dean Ambrose cracked himself out of that jail cell and came to AEW. So here is John Moxley and MJF out of their packaging. Guys, pretty nice stuff that we got going on. I'm so excited to finally have an official John Moxley in my collection. I think this is excellent. I've been waiting on this figure ever since they showed it off almost a year ago. Obviously one of the greatest days of my life. But here we have MJF as well and just one of the most, just you know what I'm saying, up and coming talents in the world, in the professional wrestling world. Just one of the best on the mic, naturally. He, he's just so damn good, man. It's kind of ridiculous. If you guys aren't a fan of MJF or whatever, I can probably understand him you know maybe in the ring you're not a big fan of him but like on the microphone and everything like that the dude is just out of this world and he can make you bite into a feud really easily but here's moxley here's mjf guys what we're gonna do first is dive into mjf's accessories and mjf and then we will run it back and take a look at john moxley's accessories and john moxley or whatever the hell he says himself well, what the hell are we waiting for so for mjf's accessories guys you get a scarf and a microphone and this microphone i'm pretty sure we've seen this before. I think we got something very similar with the ring set exclusive little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho, but it looks good. AEW logos all the way around. Little skinny, nice microphone. And MJF's hand actually comes with this like mic holding hand that's like a fist with a hole in it. And all you'll do is you'll just take this and push it down in there and he can hold the microphone. So that's pretty cool. You don't need like a regular grappling hand. It has like a specific mic holding hand where you stick the, the, the stem of the microphone or the handle down into the hand like so. So that's pretty nice. But outside of the microphone you also get this nice cloth scarf and one thing i'm realizing is it is missing the red stripes i'm not exactly sure why that is or maybe this is a different one maybe the chase variant has that accurate scarf and they changed it up a little bit but it feels really good i like the colors on it feels like a real scarf looks like a real scarf only thing is, is it doesn't have a bendy wire or anything in it so you know it's kind of hard to just like it'll drape over the shoulders but getting it to like stay in position isn't the best like it's it's not terrible but ideally you'd like to have a bendy wire in there that way you know it'll hold position and stuff like that but I mean, yeah, you guys can see there. I don't know. It's it's not bad, though. I'm glad that we got the scarf and everything. It's just I think you're going to have to, like, pose him specifically to where, it, you know, it'll hold in place and things like that. But I am not, I am ha happy that we did get the scarf, but that does it for MJF's accessories. So getting into MJF, guys, this is actually my second MJF figure. I have another one, and my boy John found these at retail literally just yesterday. So I have two of them here, and one of them has, like, a slight eye misfunction or malfunction right there. I feel like this this one lines up a whole lot better, so I decided to review this one instead of this one, so you guys can see the eyes on the one I'm reviewing look a lot better than this one, so I was really happy with that. But nonetheless, I think it's a really good head sculpt. Again, I think AEW's figures and Jazzwares are going to improve upon the head sculpts. I think they'll get better from here on out. I don't think we're going to have to worry about you know head sculpts just being awful. They've already had some pretty good ones, and they keep improving, so I think that will be a thing that we continue to see in a trend. I like this torso. I think it fits perfectly. Not too muscular, not too flabby. I think it's a good 
medium. He's got some good muscle tone and stuff like that. The arms look good. I like the lion tattoo that we got going over here. He also has this rib tattoo that I feel like I knew was there, but I didn't really think about it until, you know, I saw it on the figure. He's got the one black elbow pad. He has white wrist tape. He has his lion gear right here that matches his tattoos. And, you know, lions are like kings and royalty and stuff like that. So it fits perfectly with MJF's character. It's like a reddish orange color going on right here. It's more of like a red to me, but I can see if it's got some orange tones. You got the gold and black lion on the back. It has gold and black MJF. Nice little old English font. I like the skin tone that we got going on. It looks so good. I like, you know, just comparing it to series one with the, the, the paleness and stuff, it looks really good. I like the black knee pad. Solid black boots that look pretty solid there and everything like that. But if you guys wanted to see some articulation standpoint right here, getting into it, he can look down pretty decently. That's something that I love about the AEW figures is they have like that ball hinge so they, you know, they can look down and they can look up pretty decently compared to a Mattel and just a ball joint. So having that hinge is really nice. You get good ab crunch right here. He can bend over pretty damn nice there. You get the diaphragm pivot. You, of course, can rotate the upper part of the torso and the bottom, not all the way around without popping it off. You, you of course, get your ratchet joints in the shoulder here. They can go 360 bicep swivel. You get the double jointed arms, which are always beautiful to see. He can do the splitsies because every AEW figure is on ball joints. You get the nice thigh cut. You get the double jointed knee there. You do get boot rotation and you get the ankle pivot, which is just gorgeous, man. Just God, we need boot rotation on all figures. I was really disappointed to see that Riho and Pac did not have boot rotation. So hopefully this, uh, you know, this, this trend continues with the boot rotation being present and not on the figure. But that pretty much does it for MJF, man. Really, really enjoy the figure because I like MJF. And then for your MJF AEW figure comparisons, guys, here's MJF up next to our Series 3 Cassidy, our Series 1 Omega, our UK exclusive Cody, and our ringside exclusive Jericho. And I think they all scale pretty damn well together. I'm not going to complain about it. I think Cody is supposed to be the tallest. And it looks like he is the tallest. Slightly Kenny Omega is right there with him. And all of them scale pretty good. I, I don't think you're going to have any football trouble. I think this looks really good. I like the skin tones on all of them except for him, really. Jericho's a little bit pale, but I could accept that. I think he'd look better with one of these skin tones. But Kenny Omega, once he gets this skin tone or something, I even thought about doing a head repaint and then even uh, doing either a torso swap with MJF, possibly Hangman Page. I don't know. I'm still mulling it over because you're not going to get the black or the white wrist tape that Kenny Omega really needs. But none of the case, there's your MJF figure comparison. So for John Moxley's accessories, guys, we get pretty much what he needs, right? We don't really need anything outside of this. We get the AEW World Championship. So if you guys did not get the Chase variant Chris Jericho or you did not get the ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho, you can get the AEW Championship with this John Moxley. I talked about it in the Reho review or the ranking AEW figures from worst to best or the, you know, the Series 3 worst to best that they updated this plastic or this rubber piece right here so that it's not, you know, super flimsy. It actually has some stiffness to it so you can actually clasp it together. I know in Series 1 and uh, the ringside exclusive little bit of the bubbly Jericho, it was kind of hard to clasp together. It looks like they improved upon that, so we are really happy with that. The AEW Championship is beautiful. I think it looks really good in figure form and everything, so I like it a lot. I think it looks great. Fits the figure well. You love to freaking see it. Outside of that, we do have Moxley's entrance vest, and I don't mind that it's rubber. I think it works out better that it's rubber. It's easily to go on and off. You know, it's a nice, softer plastic or rubbery material there. You got Mox on the back in the spray paint with the orange and the splatter. Looks really nice. Fits the figure well. You guys have already seen what it looks like on the figure. Really easily to put, you know, it's really easy to put on and off the figure simply because it is a vest. You know, you just widen it, pull the arms out. Nothing too crazy, but it's got good details on it. It's got good sculpt and everything. The Mox looks really clean, and I think they did a good job on that. So that pretty much does it for Moxley's accessories, guys. Let's dive into John Moxley himself. So diving into Moxley, guys, starting out with this head sculpt. I like it. I think I am a fan of it. I think, if, if anything, maybe around the eyes is a little bit dark, but I really do like it. I think it looks pretty damn good. I like the scar on the head and everything. It fits the moment. The hair looks good and everything like that. I, I, I really do like it. I like the beard and everything. Maybe the only gripe I could possibly have is maybe just that lip curl right at the top right there. I don't think that would be necessary. I think just the kind of frown would be good instead of that little pucker right there. But you know, it's not a big deal. I still like it and everything. Again, the color's good. The beard looks good and everything. Paradigm shift, you know, farting bags. Like it. Going down into the rest of the figure, guys, I think this torso works perfectly for John Moxley. I always felt that the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso was perfect for Dean Ambrose, and this is kind of what Jazz wears 
you know, uh, sort of rendition of that torso is. Not completely sculpted. It's got a couple, you know, some definition here, but it's more of a broader chest and everything. I like the arms and shoulders. His tattoo does bother me a little bit right here. I think it's supposed to be a little bit bigger, and it's supposed to be, like, pointed downward, not at that weird angle right there, so I don't know why that is, but it's like the Raphael from Ninja Turtles little sword right there. I like the belt going down. The digital black and gray camo looks really good. All the gold zippers are put on there on decal form, which doesn't bother me. I mean, of course, a sculpt would be cool, but it still is sculpted like jogger pants or army pants. The uh, the pockets are sculpted right here. I really like the color and everything. And my favorite part is the boots. I really like the way the boots are sculpted. They look really good. They have a really good wide base and everything like that. No tread on the bottom, which is okay. I, I just like it. It kind of reminds me of like Jordan 5s right through here or something. But I have combat boots like this for my Michael Myers Halloween costume. They're very similar to this. And they look really good. It looks just like John Moxley's boots. It looks like John... It sounds like I said John Wilkes booth kind of right there. That was weird. But I like the boots. I like the boots. I like the color. I like the pants and everything. This Moxley is fire, man. I, I really do enjoy it. Let's get into a little bit of articulation before we move on here. So for the head, he can look up a lot more than he can look down. I think it's just because of this torso. But he can still look down pretty damn good. I like that right there. On your ab crunch, he can get pretty good in there. I like the way that looks. That's pretty... That's probably as deep as you can get without it popping off. But I still like it. He can go back as well. Rotate up here. He has your diaphragm pivot and stuff. You get the, you know, the 90 degree. He can go above 90 degree. That's even better right there. He does get the rotation. You get the bicep swivel. Double jointed arms, which are beautiful. He can drink. He can call on the phone. He can talk on the mic. He can put his hand over his ear. I mean, that is just gorgeous to look at. A little bit of waist turning right there without it popping off. He is on ball joints, so you get the splitsy witsies. You get the upper thigh cut. You get the double jointed knee. You get the boot rotation, and you get the ankle pivot, which is just gorgeous. You love to see that, man. I love this figure. I freaking love it. I think it's great. Just just excellent. Cannot wait to use this guy. Just a great rendition of John Moxley, man. Really good stuff. Highly recommended right now. So getting into John Moxley's figure comparisons, guys. Now, a thing that I've seen around the community is that he is too tall, and I can see where he could be a little bit large compared to other people, like the broadness and things of that nature. I don't think it's massive, and if you really want to fix it, there is a way to fix it, but I don't think it's like the biggest thing ever. He is 6'4". John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, whatever you want to say, is 6'4". And Roman Reigns is 6'3". I think Kenny Omega is 6'1". Cody is 6'2". So they don't scale horrifically. Like, yeah, this is probably more like 6'7 or something like that. But it's not horrific. I also have a way to fix the boots, which I'm also going to try and do myself. And then I'll show you guys that later on. But we are going to also take a look at some Mattel figure comparisons just to see. But there is Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes, sort of the two biggest you know, rivals. Two of the larger names in the company up next to John Moxley. But if we get him out of here, guys, or them out of here, and we bring in his S.H.I.E.L.D. members, his fellow S.H.I.E.L.D. members, here is Roman Reigns, the bloodline Roman Reigns right there. And you guys can see right here what we're looking at. So Roman Reigns is 6'3", Dean Ambrose is 6'4", and this is a little bit bigger than a gap of 6'4". This is more like, again, 6'5", 6'6", in figure comparison. But again, I am going to try and lower his height. There is a little fig hack you can do to lower the height and stuff. But I don't think, again, I don't think it's the the worst thing ever. It could definitely be better, but it's definitely not horrific. And then if we wanted to take a look at Seth Rollins, here is Seth Rollins. And yeah, Seth Rollins is definitely towered over a little bit in comparison. But again, I am going to fix that up a little bit and showcase that. But yeah, he, he does tower over Rollins pretty good. But here is Rollins up next to Roman Reigns right there. So there's that. And then I feel like they make Seth Rollins pretty damn small anyway, because I think Seth Rollins is supposed to be 6'1 or 6'2, and they make him look like he's like 5'11 or so like that. But here is our Mattel comparison with John Moxley, and you can see that he, he kind of towers over him as well, and then here is what Dean Ambrose looks like up next to Roman Reigns, which is a little bit more accurate. Maybe Dean could be an inch taller, but I, I kind of like the way that looks uh, relative to how they look in real life, because in real life, he doesn't tower over them in any stretch of the imagination, so I don't know. Definitely going to have to fix him up a little bit, but there is your John Moxley figure comparisons. But that is pretty much going to do it for our Series 2 AEW Unrivaled Collection review on John Moxley and MJF. Guys, really, really enjoy enjoyed the review. Really enjoyed both figures. I think they're both pretty damn good. Of course, John Moxley is a little bit oversized, but not nothing that we can't handle over here. I think I am going to make a video on that. And even if, you know, it's it's too tall or whatever the case is, you can, uh, you know, it's not, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Now, of course, we want him to be height accurate and stuff, but I think maybe the next time he releases, maybe they'll improve upon it. Regardless of the case, I still enjoy the figure a lot. I really like that we finally have a John Moxley in this attire and stuff. We don't have to make custom head sculpts or anything like that. We have an official one with double jointed arms and all of the good details and stuff. I cannot wait to just pose these guys around.
out, man. Like, using these AEW figures in the pick fed is going to be super fun. I can't wait to do so. I just, just, Jesus Christ. This next episode of Vindication that's coming up soon with all the new AEW figures should be pretty damn fun. I know I've gotten to pose them around a little bit, but I think we're getting there. If you guys would like to grab these, they are up for pre-order over at Ringside Collectibles Wrestling Figures.com. When shopping over there, guys, use promo code MDTOYS. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Love your support. We always appreciate it. I really, really enjoy when you guys use the code. Never goes unnoticed. You guys are the absolute best. But I think that is going to do it, guys. Let me know what you think of Moxley and MJF down in the comment section below. Who is your favorite wrestler in AEW? Let me know down in the comment section below as well. Before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout-out. This shout-out is going to go to Diego Toledo, who says, The Rio head sculpt reminds me of Aubrey Edwards, the ref, more than Riho herself. Which is actually insane that you say that, Diego, because I thought the exact same thing, and I forgot to mention it in the review. Every time I see that figure, I think of Aubrey Edwards. So I thought that was pretty good by Diego right there because I noticed that exact same thing. So I guess that I am not crazy. I think everybody kind of noticed that. It has 20 likes, so I think some other people agree with that. So a huge shout-out to Diego Toledo for that comment right there, man. I appreciate you checking out the video and the review and leaving your own personal thoughts on the figure. Never goes unnoticed, guys. I like when you guys chime in in the comment section and give me your thoughts. That is what also makes the review so fun to, uh, you know, to see what you guys think about the figures. But thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout-out to Diego, guys. Before we get out of here, never forget not to cross the line because if you cross the line, then you end up in a puddle and you end up in the puddle. You fall through. You end up drowning. Now you're drowning. Now you can't escape. Now you're running out of air. Now you're dead. And you don't want to die. So don't cross the line. Unless you have scuba gear, I guess. But then you just, you just can't go too deep in the puddle. I don't know. It's all weird now.